I'm late. I've had a day. <sighs> Say, Wiz, can you help me out? Thanks, bro. Is everything all right? My romantic comedy is a romantic tragedy. <laughs> Michelle, I can't live without you. Man, why do we always come to the movies? You can learn a lot from a movie. This holiday season, witness the story of the first Christmas through a whole new set of eyes. It's the wise men. Hide quickly. Ooh. Look up! Ah! The other way. To the other left. Ah! Deborah, are you okay? How many hooves am I holding up? <sighs> from the studio that brought you miracles from heaven and cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Meet the unlikely heroes behind the greatest story ever told. Herod is up to something. Mary needs help. We need to save her. You're in danger. You need to listen to what I'm about to say extremely carefully. Do you want a belly rub? Bo. If you want to get to my friends, you're going to have to get past me first. What is that? What's what? I wasn't supposed to look, was I? Donkey King! Dave. I'm gonna go find someone to poop on. <laughs> no, too big, too big! Ruth. Almost down. One more chasm. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, didn't exactly <clears throat> see the landing, but that was good. Dave! I'm under you and in a lot of pain. And Deborah, Cyrus, and Felix. The new king's in danger. Run for your life! Get out of the way! <laughs> Here's a little well-placed distraction. <laughs> <laughs> the star. Wait a second, are they eating chicken? Ladies, run! All right, so welcome to the Church at Lake Forest. If, uh, if you haven't been here for the last few weeks, and obviously all the kids have not been in here for the last few weeks, you may not know that we've been doing this series called Christmas at the Movies, where every week I've chosen a movie and not necessarily a Christmas movie. As a matter of fact, I've had to argue really hard that any of them were Christmas movies, especially Iron Man 3, but it is a Christmas movie. So anyway, um, we've been taking these movies and sort of pulling a little piece out of them and telling a little bit about the Christmas story, maybe sharing another story from the Bible that's somehow related to the point. And this week, I thought with all the kids in here, what better movie to choose than an actual Christmas movie that came out last holiday season, last Christmas season, The Star. And obviously, obviously Hollywood takes a little license, right? I mean, they're telling stories. And so the story that they're telling in this movie is about the donkey. His name is Boaz, and they call him Bo for short. And Boaz has this dream that one day a king will ride on his back. That one day uh, he will, he'll grow up to be a, a big stallion, you know, like he looks up to all the other horses um, who, who are just massive and beautiful, and he hopes that one day he'll be just like them. And so uh, when the movie begins, he's actually like at a grain mill, or near the beginning of the movie, uh, and he's, he's doing what donkeys do. He's pushing a mill around. And uh, as he works and works and works, <clears throat> Eventually, he gets strong enough, and his, the vision that he has for his future gets so strong that he finally breaks free. And as he begins to run, he's running from his problems, he runs into Mary and Joseph. And he runs into this whole new issue. And the issue is that there is a king, his name is Herod, I talked a little bit about Herod last week, that there is a king who wants to kill baby Jesus. 
And so, you know, I didn't show this part of the clip, but the wise men, they've gone and they've talked to King Herod. As a matter of fact, it's in Matthew chapter 2. I don't have this one on the screen, but in Matthew 2, 13, it says, after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Remember, we, we read this last week. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. See, King Herod, he was trying to kill baby Jesus. And this whole movie, this whole movie is about how, you know, and this is all fictional, this part of it, but it's about how the animals saved baby Jesus. How Bo and, you know, his bird friend and his, his sheep friend, who's a little crazy, you know, about how they all work together. And those two dogs that come in at the end, they're the two hunting dogs that are with the, the big warrior, the big soldier, who's trying to hunt down this baby and kill him. And toward the end of the movie, they finally defeat the soldier, and the dogs barely survive. And as you see at the very end, the dogs come in. And they ask a question, you know, or one of them asks, does this mean that we're good now? And the other one says, we've got to try. It's not exactly how salvation works because none of us are good. No matter how hard we try, none of us can be perfect. But the message of the movie really is this, that Jesus accepts all. That, that Jesus was born as a king. You see at the very end, the wise men show up. They give gifts to the king. And it amazes Bo because his dream came true that he got to carry because he carried Mary on his back with baby Jesus in her stomach at one point in the movie. And he got to carry a king. Now that's where the movie ends and obviously they're, they're celebrating the birth of Jesus. But the story continues. The story of Jesus continues obviously throughout the New Testament. And what I wanna share with you this morning is part of the Luke 2 Christmas story. Because just a few days after what you saw in the movie, just a few days later, this happens. This will be on the screen. Luke 2.25 says this. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. See, Simeon had a dream as well. Like Bo in the movie had this dream of, of seeing the king, of the king riding on his back. Simeon had the same dream. That one day, as a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit had confirmed to him that he would see the coming Messiah, that he would get to witness the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords before he died. Verse 27, it says, that day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. See, Herod wanted to see the king because, you know, Herod was, Herod was jealous. Herod, Herod wanted to find this baby and kill him. Simeon wanted to see the king. He wanted to see the Messiah because he knew that Jesus was the salvation of of the world. Herod was, was very greedy and self-absorbed. And Simeon, we don't know a lot about Simeon, but at least in this moment, he wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about the one that God promised. See, Herod, I would say if Herod were here on Christmas morning in, you know, 2018, that he, or, I mean, I know this is not Christmas morning, but the morning that we're celebrating Christmas together as a, as a church family, right? And if he was at your house on Christmas morning and Christmas of 2018, Herod would be all about the presents, right? He'd all be all about what am I going to get? What's for me? What's under the tree? How many do I have? How many of you parents, you know, your kids, like if you've got multiple kids like mine, they're counting the presents and seeing who gets the most. Any parents out there seeing who's got the, you know, which, and, and you got to be careful, right? Like, okay, he's got five. We need to like split this one in half and wrap it up for the other one. So she's got five, you know, what, whatever it is. But are we all like that? Like as, as adults, we may, we may not on Christmas be so wrapped up in what's under the tree for us, but the other 364 days a year, let's just be honest, right? We, we take care of ourselves. We, we get what we want as long as we can afford it. And even when we can't, we'll pay it off in January or February, or some of us will be working until March or maybe even until next November to pay off this year's Christmas debt. 
A lot of times at Christmas and the rest of the year, the source of our satisfaction is the stuff under the tree. And the question, this is you know, really just one point that I want to make this, this morning. I want to ask you one question. And the question is this, what is the source of your satisfaction? I think Christmas is a good time to reflect on that. And listen, there's, I, we've got presents under our tree. I mean, I can't wait to open some of the presents and to see my kids open their presents. And I want to find out what, you know, my mom and dad got me and, you know, my, my in-laws. Because I'm sure it's going to be great, right? I mean, it's all about me for at least 30 seconds. It's good to get gifts. It's good to give gifts. But is that the source of your satisfaction? Because the reality is even kids, kids, even if you get whatever it is that you ask for, whatever is new and shiny and parents, you know, if you got something big with four wheels and a bow on it, right, or you got that for one of your teenagers or, or, or anytime you get that, next month the new car smell wears off, right, and you, it's probably worth less than what you paid for it as soon as you drive it off the lot, and then, you know, you're still making payments when it starts to break down, right? Whatever it is that you get new, kiddos, whatever it is that you get new, next year you're going to want something else new. Parents, next year we're going to want something else new. We will never, ever, 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 ever be satisfied with the things of this world. And when I think about Herod and I think about Simeon, see, here's, here's where Herod's satisfaction came from. The source of his satisfaction was his own self-importance. He put himself first, what he wanted. He was willing to kill a baby, and not only was he willing to kill a baby, he was willing to kill hundreds, if not thousands. If you've never read that part of the story, Herod sends his soldiers, like happens in the movie, only they're not searching for the one baby. He sends the command to kill all male infants under the age of two. And there's a slaughter of infants because Herod was so self absorbed. Now, none of you are probably going to do that this Christmas season, right? I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to give that kind of an order, nor would you ever even think about something like that. But the reality is, for a lot of us, we get self-absorbed when something doesn't go our way, and not even when it's not something under the tree, but, you know, when, when we've got this day planned and you know, the, the in-laws are supposed to show up at a certain time and our kids are supposed to be there at a certain time and everybody's supposed to look their best. We're going to take this, you know, family photo with all 800 of us in the picture at one time and everybody's got to smile and you've got that one kid on the end who's turned this way, like kicking the tree, right? And it's just not going the way. What's it all about? It's all about what you want, right? It's all about your photo. And listen, I know, right? Because I'm usually the one that has to take those family photos and I'm the one who normally loses my temper, Right? When I'm trying to get all of those grandkids in the picture, I'm just like, I'm just, I quit. We'll just, you know, take what we got. We get sometimes so absorbed in ourselves that we, for at least a moment and maybe for days, forget the reason of the season. But the source of Simeon's satisfaction was seeing his Savior. The source of Simeon's satisfaction was seeing his Savior. We cannot forget this Christmas or any other Christmas or really any day of the year that the only true source of complete and full satisfaction, and listen, I'm not saying that every day is going to be perfect because you trust Jesus as your Savior, but the reality is the only place that ever can give us complete and total peace, that can satisfy us completely, it's not going to be the new cabinets in your remodeled kitchen. It's not going to be a new car in the driveway. It's not going to be the brand new gaming system and the, and the you know, the, the, the wireless headphones that go with it or the, or the new little, you know, play kitchen that you got your, 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 your darling baby girl. It's not going to be any of that. None of that will bring satisfaction, but Jesus will. And I know it's very easy for us to say that Jesus is the reason of the season, but I wonder when your kids get up on Christmas morning, or you go to your family's house Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and you go for a visit, will you see Jesus? Will they see Jesus in you? As you're ripping open presents and you're throwing tissue paper everywhere and you're enjoying your family, what I want to encourage you to do this year is to find Jesus in the moment. And I don't mean like walk over to the mantle and look at the little nativity like it's on my mantle and like, you know, do a little pet of baby Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, yes, I've got baby Jesus, you know, on my mantle, and so, yes, we're going to see Jesus. No, I'm saying, are you going to see Jesus in the moment when you see your kids 
and the smiles on their faces. Do you see Jesus in that moment? Are you thankful that God gave you your beautiful children? When you see your in-laws and your outlaws and your nieces and nephews, and when they see you, is Jesus going to be in the middle of that moment? Do they hear the Holy Spirit coming out of you because you've been planting in 2018 seeds of faith inside of your heart and the overflow of your heart is coming out of your mouth and you're sharing Jesus with the world around you. If that's not where you are in 2018, I definitely want to encourage you as you roll into 2019, make the changes necessary. Spend some time with God and his word. Continue to come to church. Surround yourselves with friends who are on the same page religiously and I don't mean that just in a religious sense, but spiritually, like the habits that they're putting into their lives are the habits they're going to cause them and you and the people around you to see Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. So don't get up on Christmas morning and let the day go by without, especially those of you parents with kids, like I've got four kids, don't let the day go by without your kids seeing Jesus and celebrating that together as a family.